your source for television news, weather, sports, current events, and musical entertainment from the University of the Ozarks in Clarksville, Arkansas. This is Ozarks Today. On today's show, local team swimmers chase records, Ozark athletes host local children for NCAA Field Day, and channels honor art, culture, and the memory of a friend. Plus weather with Dax Clark, Eagle Sports with Rhett Williamson, and this week's In Focus interview segment hosted by Lily Marlin. And the sounds of the Ozark Mountains fill the air as the mountain boomers round out this season of the Walker Hall Music Session. And now, here's your host, Kiernan Klossmeyer. Top in our news tonight, two local teens prepare to go to a national 4-H competition that might just surprise you. Gavin Wheeler is here to help us take the plunge. Every Friday after school, we come to uh, the Clarksville Aquatic Center and practice for about an hour or so. But Savannah and Abby do not practice swimming at the Clarksville Aquatic Center. Instead, they dive deep into practicing for an aquatic robotics competition. So it's been kind of a team effort over the th past three years of, we've kind of, our team has dwindled, but it's really been the two of us doing a lot with the ROV ourselves. This is the challenge course, and basically uh, what you do is you get uh, the sea perch, and the, and the, it has a little hook on it, and you try and pick it up with your hook and you want to move it to this platform. This, as you can see, it has a uh, top and a bottom. So this, the top, is worth two points and the bottom is worth one point. So in the obstacle course, there's a uh, series of hula hoops, smaller hula hoops that are um, sat at different angles or things. So with the sea perch, you have to go through the through all the hula hoops and then surface and the judge will tell you when you have surface and it's okay to come back. So when you surface, you, come, you go down and then you just go right back through the hula hoops and yep. touch the wall. Yeah, I am the driver and she is, is the, the spotter. So in Seabirch you have the driver and you have a spotter. So. And the spotter helps a lot because sometimes the driver can't see. Here we were able to win state and attend nationals in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Last year, we uh, were not able to go to Nationals, but we came very close to being able to, so. Uh, nationals is in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. They will be off to compete at Nationals in a few weeks. I'm Gavin Wheeler, signing off with KOZ 6HD. Clarksville Light and Water Company is unique in many ways. It is a city-owned utility belonging to the citizens of Clarksville rather than to an outside company. While the utility currently provides electric, water, and sewer services, this unique entity is moving beyond these fundamental services for a small town into truly progressive territory with a recently installed fiber optic data cable throughout the city and the state's largest municipal solar farm. Here's Jada Wright with a further insight from a tour design especially for staff and students from the U of O. A group from the University of the Ozarks recently went on a tour of technology to view the new solar farm that was implanted by Clarksville Light and Water Company. Mr. John Lester walked them through the process of what they will expect from the new solar farm. We want to be able to deliver these things cheaper, better, faster than what most communities can get. Mr. John Lester explains how not only the university can benefit from this, but the community as well. Uh, the university benefits by having some uh, exposure uh, for itself by being within a, a community that's progressive and forward thinking and uh, part of our supply is uh, sustainable renewable energy and uh, uh, University of the Ozarks get a part, part of that supply. The goal for the solar plant is to produce the maximum amount of uh, energy on a solar basis at the peak time. It's uh, a peak shaver for us and to save money for our customers. One of our very own teachers, Dr. Chris Carrier, describes his experience at the solar farm. It was terrific. It was nice to see um, some of the uh, facilities, um, particularly the solar field, which I'd seen from the road, but got to be up inside it and learn a little bit about how it works. And um, it, was, it was nice to learn about some of these things that I'd only been hearing about. 
We have a five megawatt power plant and it's right here within our footprint. Uh, it's generation that's delivered and produced by the most natural resource you can have is the sun. Art and culture are often paired. In this next story by Hannah Bredo, we see a meaningful connection between people, cultures, art, and memory. At this year's student art show at University of the Ozarks, several students came together to present their ideas of culture through their pieces. Culture to me is like a, a big umbrella term that is really um, kind of like the way people live and like the, the things that they relate to. And so to me, it just kind of like shows what people really love and what they care about and like their, their background, I guess. As art students across the school express their ideas of culture, they also created an interactive installation to invite everyone to share their cultures. There's so many different cultures. We want people to be able to, um, I guess, pay homage to their culture and either like a word or a phrase or like their definition of culture. Uh, oddly, um, I also think about culture connected to food. So I also think about the way that culture can change flavors um, in kind of creating really interesting things to eat as well. There are several creative installations within the art show, but this year's show is a little different as art students came together to create a memorial installation for Carmen Castorena, an alumni who had recently passed in a tragic car accident. I was excited that the students wanted to have a memorial piece for her, but it is very bittersweet. I just feel a great loss um, to our community. She was a voice that we really needed to have. She would always bring people together. She would help people and teach people and kind of build bridges in between um, other people. And so that's something I also really appreciated about her. It's like not everyone has that capacity to reach out and connect. Carmen was a very bubbly person that like would always make everyone smile. And a lot of people say they don't even know how they met her, that she just kind of like popped into their lives. And so she was always just like this ray of sunshine. And we wanted to pay homage to like her and like show how like bright and happy she was and like um, reference some of the things that she liked, like the cacti that are in pieces and things like that. This has been Hannah Bredo with Ozarks Today on KUOZ 6HD. This year, the University of the Ozarks is celebrating several national titles in multiple sports. But perhaps one of the events we're most proud of is the time athletes and coaches set aside each year to make new friends in the community. It was my honor to report on this very special day. What makes you happy? Is it playing your favorite sport, spending time outside, or is it hanging with your friends? Well, for University of the Ozarks D3 student athletes, it's all three. On Thursday, April 12th, University of the Ozarks athletes spent time with the self-contained special education classrooms in Clarksville and Lamar, making arts and crafts, playing tennis, shooting hoops, playing soccer, but most importantly, making new friends. This is important to us because the visitors are often not included in other activities on their campuses so by bringing them here they get a special opportunity to not only enjoy our beautiful campus but to make some new friends with the what we call the bigs the university students and athletes um, because it brings our community together not only our campus community but like our local community uh, so there's so much mutual gain from this and for the kids to come out here and to get to experience what we experience and as a unit together it just there's so much it's just life enhancing is how I like to put it the experiences between the athletes and students this day are ones they sure aren't to forget and the memories made are sure to last a lifetime this has been Karen Klossmeyer with KUOZ6 HD. April is the national month of, well, lots of things, not the least of which is poetry. As Bradley Thompson reports, famous and some sometimes emphatically infamous project poet made a special one night only extra appearance last week. Members of the Ozarks community are finding creative ways to celebrate their love of poetry in honor of April being considered National Poetry Month. Among various other activities around campus this month, students can spectate and participate in a special one-night-only version of the beloved Battle Royale Poetry Slam competition, Project Poet. As usual, the event is emceed by Ozarks professor and poet Dr. Chris Carrier. To mix things up, though, the judge table this time around is made up exclusively of finalists from the Project Poet season last fall. 
I feel kind of bad judging. I feel like I'm harshing on people because it's always hard just going up there and giving it your all. There were different kinds of poems, poems about the world, poems about themselves, and it was just kind of neat to hear everyone's views on this theme of globalization and how it relates to everything. Globalization has been the theme this past week here at Ozarks, Project Poet being just one of the ways students can express themselves on the topic of culture and engaging with the larger world. And it's a platform that people can be honest about themselves and about their views of the world. Because I mean, like what we're talking about is pretty controversial stuff, especially where we're located. And I think to have this kind of platform where people are willing to like listen to what you have to say, I mean, that's that's the magic of this event. This land was supposed to be a melting pot of people, a simple goal with a simple purpose. Instead of melting together, it seems the pot has caused diffusion across the whole spectrum. I just think it's really exciting to be on a campus where um, people will take time to celebrate creative endeavors. It's exciting to be in that vibrant um, creative community and I'm glad that people here are excited to support that. So it's always going to have a special place in my heart and I really hope that we can keep this project going. There are all winners in my book. Michael Phelps holds the record for the most Olympic medals won at a single Olympic game. He's a household name and once said, quote, swimming is normal for me. I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable, and I know my surroundings, end quote. Reporter Hannah Bredo introduces us to a local swimming phenom who shares Phelps' affinity for the water and may one day be staying on his footsteps on the podium. Making waves at the local aquatic center, Chloe Weathers, a 15-year-old student, has recently broken five pool records. I have broken five pool records at this pool in the 400 IM, the 50 backstroke, the 50 breaststroke, the 200 butterfly, and the 25 butterfly. According to her coach, David DeGeis, Chloe has been breaking records throughout her career in swimming. And it's a couple of them she has broken several times. Um, she had almost every freestyle record, I believe, at one point. Wading in the water has always been natural for Chloe, as she tells us how she got her start. I was six years old, and I just did a summer league thing. I liked it. It was like, I don't know, the first time I got in the water, I just loved it. That same love for the water has pushed Chloe to be her best, and her career continues to look bright as Coach DeGuy shares his plans for her moving forward. Well, um, she goes into high school next year, so I'm really hoping that she can kind of kind of get recognized on the high school level. I want to get her to, uh, to top three at least at state, probably her freshman year. I'm really working on that um, for high school, and then moving forward, I want to prepare her for college. Uh, no matter where she goes, I'll definitely support her any, any um, college she'd like to go to. I want her to just push herself. I want her to find a college that will push her to. So. This has been Hannah Breda with Ozarks Today on KUOZ 6HD. Stay tuned. We have a lot more for you on Ozarks Today, including sports with Rhett Williamson, an expert on autism, talks with Lily Marlowe in this week's In Focus, some homegrown music from the Mountain Boomers, and the ever-changing spring weather with Dax Clark. But first, I like to show you something you normally don't get to see on our show. The crew working in the control room. Tonight's show is being directed by Barry Osorio, and just about now, you'll see her. What she doesn't know is that since she's graduating in a couple of short weeks, we have a surprise for her on live television. Okay, so, uh, Bede, she just, she was there to help me with my first project, and she's always been there, helpful and willing to help me through whatever I've needed help with, and I really appreciate her for that. So Betty, Betty is a very helpful person. When I first came here, she was my OE mentor, and she helped me through the whole process of moving in and becoming more comfortable here at Ozark. And congratulations on graduating. Good luck. We're all gonna miss you. Or, I, I'm gonna miss you a lot. Um, this year has been lots of fun. You've watched me lay on many different things that shouldn't be laid on. Um, given me a couple of pretty interesting nicknames. And I 
I think we've had fun and been great. It's good. See you later. Um, congratulations, Barry, on graduating. Uh, it's been really cool knowing you for like the last semester or so. Even though I'm just a freshman just coming in. Sad that you're already leaving, but I wish you good luck on your future wherever you end up. Uh, congratulations on uh, graduating, Barry. Uh, I'm gonna miss you. Uh, I worked with you for about 90% of my uh, stories. You were my producer, which that was great. Uh, I loved working with you at the Hot Springs Film Festival, and I even had a lot of fun doing that um, free freelance um, photography work that we did while we were down there in Hot Springs. I'm a, I'm a missing. Good luck on what you do, Barry. Well, Ben, I'm really going to miss you. You really helped me along in all of this, and I don't know what I could have done without you. The countless times you've checked me out and helped me when I was in a tough spot, the editing, everything. And I just wish you all the best with whatever it is that you choose to do, because you know what? You're going to be awesome at whatever you do. Barry Osorio, what can I say that hasn't already been said? Oh yeah, you've dealt with me for the past year. Uh, that alone is a challenge, so to be able to do that and graduate, to that I congratulate you. Good luck out there. Bede, you are a really awesome producer. You're one of a kind. Um, you've helped me a lot throughout the time I've been in Media Productions 1 and 2. You've taught me a lot of tricks on how to edit my videos, and I just thank you for it, and I hope whatever you do in the future, you're awesome at it. Love you. Um, hey Bede, it's been a pleasure. Um, working alongside you and being a co-producer. You're definitely gonna be missed around here, um, especially you know your positivity and how you're always looking on the bright side of things. Um, and I know that you're gonna be successful wherever you go, no matter what you do, and you're gonna be missed. I just want to wish you the best. I know you're gonna success in the coming years, and thank you very much for everything. So Bera, you're leaving us. Who's going to come to my house and color? I don't know. We'll miss you so much. You did a documentary. You did a Spanish soap opera. You were awesome. Come back and see us. Bere, I hear that you're getting the boot. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations. It was very nice getting to know you over, the, over this last year, and I wish you the very, very best. It's really been a pleasure working with you as a student and as an advisee and as a friend. Um, I remember the time that you and Cheryl came out and cooked food and you made a flan for us. And even though it didn't turn out perfectly, it was a great experience, great memory. And I also want to apologize that in four years I have not yet said your name correctly. I always end up saying it kind of like Barry. But you know, in some ways I think that's appropriate because you're just as sweet as any kind of Barry. Good luck and I hope you have a great future ahead of you. Well, Barry, I have some bad news for you. I've been able to access your grades. You're not leaving. Sorry, yep. I'm afraid the time has come and we're gonna have to say goodbye, but we want you to know how special you are and we really appreciate everything that you've done while you've been here as a student, not only for the RTV program, but for the choir, the sociology program, and just all the people that you've touched in such a positive way. We're gonna miss you. We do an annual tournament, uh, usually in September of every year. Uh, back in 2015, we we lost uh, Deputy Smith, and you know we was trying to figure out a way that we could continue Sonny's legacy. Uh, 
you know, without him being with us. And a fishing tournament seemed like a, a fun way for the community to get involved uh, and support a, a great cause. So basically anything that they can catch, whether it be catfish, gar, whatever, uh, we're going to have a separate pot for that, just to kind of make it a little more fun. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's several different opportunities out here for people to, to win some money and some good prizes. At the end of the year, uh, we will turn back scholarships for area youth that's wanting to get into either law enforcement or any type of public service. You know, we're just going to come out here, we're going to have fun, and uh, like I said, support a great cause, and, and every year it's just amazing to see everybody come together to, to help us out. You know, great community, great sponsors, great fishermen, we couldn't ask for anything more. KUOZ 6 HD weather forecaster, Dax Clark. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's been a pretty cool day out there and really over the past several days, but this time last week, it was not the same situation. We were talking about the potential for tornadoes and severe weather, and unfortunately that happened. So it's going to kind of give a recap of what happened last week. So far, the National Weather Service has confirmed 13 tornadoes in the state of Arkansas meeting the criteria for an outbreak, including one in Johnson County. And this one was up near Ozone. It was an EF1 tornado. Uh, had a path of around five miles with winds up to 110 miles an hour. It was 250 yards wide. Thankfully, the storm developed well north of the city of Clarksville and was moving away at the time, so we didn't have to deal with any of the tornado threat in Clarksville. Now, however, taking a look at where it tracked, it did track in between Salus and Ozone, damaged a lot of the trees in the Ozark National Forest, as well as a couple of homes, tearing off some of those roofs and then downing power lines, knocking out power to portions of uh, the Ozark National Forest area. Now, one of the bigger stories in the area, the, one of the biggest tornadoes Arkansas has seen in quite some time, unfortunately, also struck very close to our area. The Mountainburg, tor Mountainburg tornado rated an EF2. That is considered strong on the enhanced Fugitive scale. It was more long track, about 11 miles it was on the ground with winds as high as 130 miles an hour. We've obtained um, some pictures also that we're going to use from our friends at KFSM. Look at this thing. It was a half a mile wide, and this is why we were talking about the potential for long track tornadoes and strong tornadoes, and this one by all means was. Take a look at the damage that you can see here on their Sky 5 cam, again from our friends at KFSM. A lot of damage and destruction out there in Mountainburg, and over half the town has reportedly sustained damage, and they are still dealing with that this week. You can see this house right here just wiped clear off the foundation as winds over 120 to 130 miles an hour raked the city. And you can see here it touched down around Rudy and then continued. It crossed Interstate 49 uh, just north of Alma and the Rudy and then touched or lifted near Lake Fort Smith after going through a lot of residential areas, unfortunately. But thankfully, this week has been a lot calmer and that trend's really going to continue other than just a chance for some isolated showers. Currently, it is 56 degrees, well below the average in Clarksville, mostly sunny skies and it is beautiful out there. And it really has been for quite some time, thankfully. Much need a break. Winds, no, not talking about just a whole lot, light and variable. So thankfully, those winds have died down because last week they were cranking pretty much all seven days. Today, the high was only 64 degrees, well below the high or the average high of 75. And then our low, again, 42, well below uh, the normal of 50. And again, tonight it gets cold yet again, unfortunately. Now, let's take a look at the satellite and radar. Not a whole lot out there. It's pretty clear across the United States from west to east, other than just a few high clouds out there. So a much need a break for not only us, but really the entire country because we've been dealing with just so much here lately. Temperatures nationwide, you can see very cool as that bowl of Arctic air has uh, slid towards the south and is really encompassing much of the United States other than Florida where they're in the 80s. Now currently as of seven o'clock, we are in the 50s, 55 in Heber Springs, 53 in Mountain Home, 
56 in Clarksville with the 60s to our south in El Dorado, Monticello, and Texarkana. And that warmth will begin uh, to really move off towards the south. It's going to get even a little bit chillier for this weekend with some rain chances, clouds, and then yes, more cool weather. So as we take a look here at the rainfall forecast again, we do expect uh, quite a bit of rain this weekend, unfortunately, especially across the eastern half of the state. One to three inches of rain is expected in Conway, Little Rock, Pine Bluff, over towards the Memphis area. Now locally in the Clarksville area up through Fayetteville, I think most of us are going to see right about an inch of rain. And this starts Saturday night and then goes, unfortunately, probably through a lot of the day on Sunday. And so it looks like maybe a washout for your Sunday plans. Saturday looks all right right now if you have plans during the day, but after 4 and 5 o'clock, those showers will begin to approach from the south. Now tonight, like I said, it gets cold again. 38 in Clarksville, 35 in Ozone. Could even see some frost in Ozone, maybe even in Hagerville as well. Uh, it just depends on if we can see those high clouds or not. So it might be a good idea to bring those plants in, especially if you live north of town, north of Clarksville. Tomorrow, though, we warm up rapidly. Very nice day for the rain sets in. Uh, 64 in Ozone tomorrow, 66 in Clarksville under mostly sunny skies. So a beautiful day to get out and fish or hammock or do whatever you need to do outside before that rain moves in for the weekend. Here, I'll step out of the way so you can see we're expecting rain to move in again for Saturday, a 60% chance. Really after 4 or 5 o'clock is when that's going to start up, and it may even be after dark before we see any real heavy rain. Sunday, it looks like we see rain most of the day, and then thankfully, Again, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we uh, warm up again with temperatures in the 70s and still really not feeling like true spring. The dry air is going to continue to stay in place with cool temperatures and cool nights, but no complaints here. So stay tuned because we do have sports coming up after the break. figure out a way that we can continue Sonny's legacy, uh, you know, without him being with us. We were trying to figure out a, a great way to do that, and a fishing tournament seemed like a, a fun way for the community to get involved uh, and support a, a great cause. Basically anything that they can catch, whether it be catfish, gar, or whatever, uh, we're going to have a separate pot for that, just to kind of make it a little more fun. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's several different opportunities out here for people to, to win some money and some good prizes. You know, we're just gonna come out here, we're gonna have fun, and uh, like I said, support a great cause, and, and every year it's just amazing to see everybody come together to, to help us out, you know, great community, great sponsors, great fishermen. We couldn't ask for anything more. Now, Eagle Sports with Rhett Williamson. The Eagles started the weekend off on the right foot Saturday with tennis. The men and women's team each picked up 9-0 dominating victories over Louisiana College. Softball picked up right where tennis left off by sweeping Hardin-Simmons. The Eagles sent the Cowgirls home packing with 2-1, 4-3, and 12-5 victories. Baseball also played Hardin-Simmons at home this past weekend. 
The first game went to the Cowboys 6-2 before the good guys got back on track with 11-8 and 10-5 victories. On Tuesday, they traveled to Arkadelphia for a single game against Wachita Baptist. Ozarks couldn't get the bats going and lost 4-2. Ozarks Athletics has been fortunate enough to enjoy great highs over the years, and there have been many people who have played a role. Ozarks contributing backpack journalist Christian Johnson has a story on the man behind it all. Josh Pippis, Sports Information Director at the University of the Ozarks, has built quite an impressive reputation among student athletes. I'm going on my uh, fifth year here. At our softball game, he runs our video, he runs our scoreboard for us. I don't remember exactly how many times I've lost count of my count when I'm pitching. He does a great job for all of us. He's always so supportive of all the girls when we see him just around on campus, and we really enjoy having him out at the field with us. He's usually one of the first ones to arrive and usually one of the last ones to leave. And the thing about Josh is he's never out of season. He goes from the fall sports to the winter sports to the spring sports, and he just, he's always got something to do because there's always some sport that's in season and he's trying to get them as much publicity as possible. I asked Mr. Clark how Josh handles stress when in a fast-paced work environment, and this is what he had to say. He handles stress fine. He, he stays, like I said, busy and, and works, and he just he just works through it. I mean, he doesn't really ever gripe, doesn't complain, doesn't say anything. I know he's tired at times, but he just kind of presses through. Uh, yeah, no, I appreciate Josh and everything that he does here. Um, he definitely keeps, up, keeps us up to date, uh, the athletes. I know... Uh, if we're on a road trip or anything like that, and especially for the people that aren't traveling or anything like that, that uh, right when the game is over, uh, you look at the website and uh, everything's there. Being a guy who just loves to look at stats and things like that and dive into the numbers, um, Josh is real good about keeping up there. Uh, not only that, um, just things he does with social media, whether it be you know Twitter or Facebook or you know any platform that he's really on. He's really up to date, trying to get uh, fans out to the games and trying to get people out there and participate, which I think is really awesome for the, for the program. So I've been here 15 plus years. I uh, take advantage of all of our talented students uh, to help me in, uh, with work study jobs. They provide me with photography, with uh, helping with stats, press releases, uh, social media, and that type of thing. Josh is very successful at his job, but he also loves seeing others succeed in their lives. I've had students work under me. It's a thrill to see them be successful in sports information. We've got, I've got a couple out there. They're at uh, NCAA Division II level. There's one at uh, Division I Pepperdine University right now, Sarah Ottoman, uh, who's had great success. So I'm always happy to see my former students go on and do great things. Having worked with Josh, I know firsthand that he is very skilled at multitasking and making sure athletic events run efficiently and effectively. Sports information has really changed the last five to 10 years. Social media has changed, changed my profession uh, to the point where it takes more than one person to be able to do everything, to cover everything. I'm relying on student work and I have great student workers, uh, but sports information is, uh, about 24-7 now. The DH, number five, Dakota Ebar. At shortstop, number four, Fielder Dufresne. Leading off our Simmons, number two, Sierra Woodyard. As busy as Josh is, he still manages to be a great father to his kids, even while he's on the job. So I have three sons, expecting another one, so that's four. Uh, big family, but we, we love kids, we love being around kids, but uh, so I have had brought my uh, couple baseball and basketball games. Actually, my oldest uh, helped help with the camera uh, this year on some live video for basketball. Had another son uh, come and uh, help run the scoreboard at the baseball game. So I have, they, you know, they've come a few times and helped me. The best part of Josh's job is the satisfaction of getting to see students become the best they can be in all aspects of their lives. Succeed on the field or court and in the classroom. Uh, you know, those, those type of students are uh, the cream of the crop, and those are the students that also uh, are usually end up being really successful in life. It's time for a break. Stick around for In Focus with Lily Marlowe on KUOZ 6 HD.
The mission of Ozark Rape Crisis Center is to work toward the elimination of sexual violence through service, advocacy, and education. Because each person has the right to live free from sexual violence, we will work with integrity, build trust, provide access, and demonstrate consistency in the communities we serve. Bringing the issues and topic shapers into focus, welcome to this week's edition of In Focus on Ozarks Today with your host, Lily Marlowe. The autism spectrum disorder refers to a range of coordinate conditions characterized by change challenges within social skills. Tonight we're talking to someone who really knows all about that. Uh, when we, as we interview the coordinator of the Autism Spectrum Disorder Services, Matthew Eubanks. Matthew, how are you today? Hi, Lily. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking me to be here tonight. So, tell us a little bit more about uh, the clinical definition of autism. Okay. I think sometimes when people hear the word autism, they think that it's going to mean the same thing for every person. And, and it really doesn't. It's, um, it's specific to every person who's on the spectrum. So what the way I usually like to describe it, um, I like to describe autism as a cluster of symptoms that exists along a continuum from pretty severe to maybe not so severe. And those symptoms include um, social challenges, uh, communication challenges, which are gonna be either verbal or nonverbal or both, and then repetitive behaviors. So social interactions, communication, and then behavior. And so the severity of those symptoms and the expression of those symptoms really varies um, according to the person. Mm -hmm. So you would say that it, how do you explain a spectrum disorder and does it actually, like, how would you put that into sure. words? <laughs> I, I would say that, um, that it, the, spe the spectrum aspect of it really speaks to the varying levels of severity. So um, maybe someone um, might just be affected in a couple of ways, or maybe somebody would have um, a lot more effects of the, of the disorder, um, just depending on kind of where on that continuum or spectrum that they are. So tell us about some famous people who have been or who are now thought to be or okay. to have had uh, autism. Okay, that's an interesting um, subject, and it's one... Um, that people get really invested in. And if you look online, different people are gonna have different opinions. So um, I've read that some people think Mozart might have been on the autism spectrum. Well, how do we know that? He's not with us anymore. Um, some people I just saw that, some people thought Charles Darwin was on the spectrum. Um, if we fast forward to contemporary times, it's a little easier because people can self-identify. <laughs> so um, if you've ever seen the movie not fried green tomatoes. Um, the other one said in Louisiana, um, Daryl Hannah was in it, Dolly Parton was in it. I can't think of the name <laughs> of the movie, but anyway, Daryl Hannah um, was identified as having um, autism spectrum disorder as a young child. She's a famous actress. Um, she's won many awards. Dan Aykroyd is another um, famous actor who is on the autism spectrum. Um, also people in science. Um, Temple Grandin is a famous scientist who has been identified as someone who has autism spectrum disorder, and she's sort of been a crusader and an advocate for, uh, for the spectrum as well. So now that we kind of have a better idea mm -hmm. and a grasp of what autism is, mm -hmm. uh, what do you do specifically here at the U of O? Okay, that's a great question. Um, and it varies from day to day, but <laughs> um, I work with uh, JLC students, uh, students in the Learning Center, um, who have either ASD or have other social learning challenges. And so I meet with them um, anywhere from every day to a couple times a week, and we sort of uh, problem solve social situations and talk about communication skills. Um, because college is a time to figure out a lot of those things. And so uh, we talk about how you might interact with your professor one way outside of class and another way in class. Um, and those nuances might be difficult for a person on the spectrum, so we talk about that. And that's sort of my day. But then I organize and uh, put together um, social events also. And so we have a group that meets once a week and we do everything from work on skills to um, 
just to be together socially and go to local events and restaurants and that sort of thing. So that's sort of my job in a nutshell. So you talked about the social events. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that one of the things you do is a social night at Fox in the Fork. Would mm -hmm. you like to tell us a little bit more about sure, that? Sure, sure. Once a month, um, our group goes out um, to various places. Gosh, we've been to um, several different um, local restaurants. And so what that really seeks to accomplish is to help people practice those social or um, situations that they may not otherwise have in their day-to-day -day life. So, so we do that. Um, it also helps um, my students work on planning events um, because I didn't mention this earlier, but um, one of the other areas that can be affected by autism is what we call executive functioning. And so organizing tasks and putting things together. Um, and so uh, getting a group of people from point A to point B and what time do we need to leave and how do we get the ticket split and that sort of thing. So it's, it's for fun, but it's also to learn um, some important real life skills also. So tell us a little bit more about you and your background. Uh, where did you go to college? You know, Sure, I went to um, a small private liberal arts college, a lot like U of O actually, in Alabama. Um, and then after that, I worked on a master's in counseling because um, I wanted to be a therapist. And so, so I did a master's in counseling at um, Asbury Seminary just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. And then for the next 10 years or so, I uh, worked in community mental health and um, things like that um, to work on clinical licensing and, and all that sort of thing. So that was um, my journey all along. I wanted to be in a higher education setting and so I uh, was glad when, when I found this opportunity. So you mainly deal with uh, people in the JLC mm -hmm. and the Learning Center, mm -hmm. but I, I've heard you do other stuff around um, campus. Could you? I do. One of the things that, um, that I feel really strongly about is um, being a resource for people on campus. So a lot of times I, I talk to um, uh, student affairs and, and professors and that sort of thing to try to help make uh, our campus a more inclusive place for for people on the spectrum but then for everybody because it's a because we're, we're a community you know um, and so that said there are other things I do as well um, I sing in the chapel choir I sing in um, chamber singers I go to events and all sorts of things. I, I'm enjoying being. Um, I'm enjoying being a part of things here. It's a good place. Well, that's fantastic. Do you have anything else about what we've talked about that you would like to go over? I would say that um, I would remind anyone who's who's watching today uh, that April is Autism Awareness Month, and so um, you may see people wearing um, puzzle piece ribbons. If you see that, you'll know what that means. Um, and I would just tell you that if you can um, build a relationship with somebody who's on the autism spectrum, um, you may be surprised at the perspective they bring to your life. And, um, and I would encourage, encourage folks to just get to know somebody different. That's fantastic. Um, thank you very much for talking with us today and for informing us more about this stuff. We wish you luck in uh, everything that you do at the JLC and you're setting up events and such. Great. Thanks, um, Lily. That's it for this edition of In Focus and for our season with Ozarks Today. It's been a great ride and I appreciate all of my guests and of course all of you, our audience. Coming up next, we've got some good old-fashioned bluegrass with beloved local band, the Mountain Boomers. Good evening and welcome to KUOZ Election Night. No. <laughs> should I even be driving? Hey man, you should probably not do this. Over 10,000 people died in 2015 from drunk driving. So are you like sober me? And you are like me only drunker. Driving drunk is actually a lot easier than driving sober because you're like 
relax when you're out there on the road. No, don't listen to him. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's not like a third of traffic deaths are caused by drunk drivers. Yes, they are. You wanna fight? Okay, don't touch me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna let y'all figure this out. I'm gonna go back inside. Three tests to study for, two research papers you to need do, to get and a speech speed. to give. Assignments are due to this week time to before class. Room. 45 you don't minutes have to complete this project. Call your Work this 40 test. hours this week to pay Be the bills. Get this keep project. up your you GPA to, to keep that scholarship. You keep everything. You're going to have so to pull an all-nighter to get this all done. Welcome back, everyone, and again, thank you for joining us for the show this spring. We have a lot of people to thank, including you, our viewers, our story subjects, and all of the reporters and crew. One of the highlights of the show this season would have to be our musical guests, appearing on what we call Walker Hall Sessions, named after the Walker Hall Teacher Education and Communication Building that houses our broadcast studio. This week, we've got a treat for you from right here in Clarksville, Arkansas. We're proud to present the Mountain Boomers.
let's play another one. All right.
and then I was over there tapping my feet and almost breaking into a dance. So uh, <laughs> I would we like to know. almost got you, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'd like to know uh, how each of you got started into playing each of your instruments and what you got into playing this genre. What sparked your love for this? So, I'll start with you. Uh, Bill or Don, she was here. Okay. I've always wanted to play, and I went to do my internship in Tulsa. My basketball coach from high school gave me his daddy's fiddle and said, I can't give you this, but I want you to take it with you and maybe pick it up a couple of times while you're gone and then give it back to me when you come back. So I did, and later on I bought a fiddle, and here I am still sawing away, trying to learn how to play the fiddle. <laughs> Don? Uh, well, I started playing music early, when I was about four or five, played the piano. And then when, when Bill got interested in fiddling, I got a fiddle. And he could always out-fiddle me, so I took up the bass. <laughs> We've been playing music together since about the ninth grade, which amounts to about 60 years. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I've only got about half that time with these two gentlemen, uh, about 30 years worth here with them. Uh, I find that old time string band music is one that, uh, it's a participatory genre that the audience can get involved with clogging and, and dancing and such, and sing along too. So I like it for that reason, thanks. So two of the songs you guys played were all instrumental and then the last one was a little bit of vocals. Do you guys just, before you go, or do you just think of songs? You're like, oh, I like that one, I'm gonna play that, or do you specifically, like today, feel like instrumental today? If you we like didn't know what we were gonna play until mm -hmm. we got over here. So we, pl we thought about a couple of them, but mm -hmm. then that one that had the words to it, I didn't anticipate. <coughs> Uh, to play it's three exactly two. a spur of the moment deal, but that's probably how it was, you know, a hundred years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's play this. <laughs> we know yeah. several tunes, so that's we don't. We not difficult to find something to play. Uh, the other members of our band that couldn't be here today are going to be sorry they missed this. Thank yeah. you for having us. You'll be sorry no they problem. missed it. That they missed it too. It really helped. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you, Louis. Indeed. Bill. Don. Thank you for watching Ozarks today. I want to give a special thanks. Uh, this has been an amazing spring season. And a special thank you to one of our producers, Barry Osorio. She's a graduating senior this year, and we're all going to miss her. And don't forget, here at University of the Ozarks, we're having our spring choir concert, April 26th at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night. So, thank you. Guys. <laughs>